Good morning. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church School and Preschool. We are happy to have you. Hey, Will, can you run slides? Fantastic. Children, otherwise known as slave labor. All right. What's going on? Okay, first off, this is our second week of bulletins. Bulletins. Who here has seen Full Metal Jacket? We got, we got a few. We got a few. This bulletin is yours. There are many like it. But this one is yours. When you leave, you will take your bulletin with you. You will not turn your bulletin back in. Because there's all sorts of good stuff in here. Daily readings to keep you on your Bible all week. Um, introit, collect. You can, you, can sing, you can sing karaoke to yourself all week long. It's good stuff. We even give you the notes. We even give you the notes. So, really, because of COVID and all that stuff, all that craziness that hasn't gone away, um, do not turn your bulletins back in. Throw it away or take it with you. Take it with you preferably. Uh, because, again, those daily readings are a big thing. It keeps you in your Bible. Speaking of keeping you in your Bible, what you'll notice in the bulletin, there are no words listed for the readings. Because we want you to bring one of these to church with you. Now, there are those that say, hey, paper, that's such a thing of the past. I've got my phone now. That's great. If you have the Bible app on your phone... Bring that out during service if you want to follow along with the readings. The readings are listed in here. Look them up beforehand. We'll give you a little bit of time. The lay minister will give you a little bit of time as he begins the reading for you to find the Bible passage. But really, bring your Bibles to church. We've been stressing that for the past couple weeks. The reason we do that, the reason that we're doing that, is that overall within the church, regardless of what's happening outside of the church, within the church, our Bible literacy isn't that great. We're not comfortable with dealing with the Scriptures. We as God's people, this is a gift. This is a gift that God gives us. We need to be able to be comfortable with it. Use it, flip it, make the pages dirty with fingerprints and notes. Get to know it and have it become part of who you are. Read it, process it, inwardly digest it, as our prayers often say. So bring your Bible to church or that Bible app. Either or. Get to know your scriptures. Okay. Golf tournament is coming up. We talked about that the past couple weeks. If you're a golfer, we need you. We need you to golf. August 17th, Monday. We need golfers. If you would like to golf, see Miss Grauman, who's late again to church. Is she coming? She's not coming. Well, you can't see her this week, but you can call her, and she would love to put you on the list to golf. Okay? That golf tournament's for the school, which reminds us that school is right around the corner, and all the kids said, yay! Not yay. Not, not yay. Not yay. Ms. Bergmeier says yay. Yay! School's right around the corner starting August 26th. Where uh, teachers will jump into gear here in a week, right? You guys report in a week and get started. So that means summer's coming to a close, which means Bible study that we've been doing online, YouTube. The adult Bible study is done for the summer. We're taking a couple weeks off. Because here on September 13th, we will do the grand kickoff and start in-person Bible study again. Kids will be in here, confirmands down the hall. The adults will be in the narthex. Stay tuned for details about, about that. Okay. The last announcement is a personal announcement from, from the Meadows family. There has been an anonymous donor of gift cards to our family for the past several weeks. 
past several weeks. Whoever it is, we just want to know, we, we, we want you to know that we appreciate it and we thank you very, very much. It has been a tremendous help. Whoever you are, we don't need to know you if you wish to stay anonymous, but we want to say thank you. With that, are there any other announcements that we need to bring before the congregation? Okay. Let's stand, socially distance, waving at each other, and say, peace of Christ. We continue with our opening hymn. You may be seated.
As you are able, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have begun our worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed regarding the first person of the Holy Trinity. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, ears, ears and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Let us humble, humble ourselves before God, confess our sins to him, and ask his gracious forgiveness. We confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and before one another that we are sinful human beings by nature and by deed. We have not always put God first. We have used his holy name in ways that do not honor him. We have not always been thoughtful caretakers of his creation and have not shared his bounty with others at all times. We have been heedless in word and deed and have not always kept our thoughts, words, and deeds pure and honorable. We sinned in ways we know and in ways we do not even recognize. We have wished for that which was not rightfully ours and have not put the best construction on all things and on all people. We pray God to have mercy on us, to forgive us all our sins, and to bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all those sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of love, in his ministry, your son Jesus showed his mastery over all the forces of nature, including those of great power. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on him and to trust his guidance in all things as we pass through this world, confident in his care. Through the same Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with our Old Testament reading. If you want to grab your Bibles or your Bible app, open it up to Job 38, starting with the fourth verse. The Old Testament reading comes from Job 38, verses 4 through 18. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measure? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who put, or, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made clouds as garment and thick, 
darkness is swaddling band and prescri prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far shall you come and no further. And here shall your proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it. It is charged like clay under the seal and its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanses of the earth? Declare if you know all this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson comes from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 17. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have, not, of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those, those who preach the good news but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, you have believed what he has heard from us. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise if you are able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel today comes from Matthew 14, starting with the 22nd verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, of the, to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got in the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Together we join with the church here and throughout time to confess our common faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Invite the children of the congregation to come forward for the children's message. Well, good morning. Good morning. Hello. The one that said hello just said hello louder. One more time. Good morning. Hello. As good as we're going to get. All right. Okay, so. Moms and grandmas, do you love them? Yeah. Emery, you love grandma? Yeah. What's grandma's favorite color? Red. <laughs> I didn't even ask you a question. Eli, what's your grandma's favorite color? Yellow. Hunter, you know mom's favorite color? You know her birthday? What's her birthday? <laughs> Looks at Callie, I love it. Callie, do you know mom's birthday? What's mom's birthday? February 19th. God. Good. Now we love moms and grandmas. And we know things about moms and grandmas. We know favorite colors and birth dates and all that. In fact, you can't separate those two. You can't love someone without knowing them. Would you really love mom or grandma if you didn't know anything about them? Favorite food or favorite color? Do you think you could? Could you love someone without knowing them? You could love them without knowing them. What would you love? You don't know anything about them. Jesus is the exact same way. We can't love him unless we know him. And that's why he gave us the Bible. So that we could know all about him. And he gave us the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit could tell us all about him. So we know that he was born, and who was Jesus' mom? Who's Jesus' mom? Mary, right? How'd Jesus die? On the cross. Did he rise again? Yes, we know all sorts of stuff about Jesus because we love him. You can't love someone without knowing them. And thankfully, God has given us the Bible so that we can know him and love him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've told us all about your son, Jesus Christ, so that we can know him and through him know you. Lord, help us to always learn more and grow more in that faith and knowledge of Jesus, your Son. And all God's kids said, Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your seats. Jesus was real. We continue with our sermon hymn.
Shalom. Grace and peace be yours in the knowledge of God above and Jesus the Messiah. Amen. I practiced that line over and over again. Because I knew if I, if I got through that line, the rest of this would be a breeze. And now that I'm through the first line, and I realize I have the rest of the message to go, not quite as breezy as I was hoping. You see, I just, I don't do this so well, this speaking in front of people. I don't have the words so often in the time. Not, not like my friend Paul. He's educated. He's a smart man. You ask him a question, he has such beautiful words that come out of his mouth. And, and he tells me, you can do anything through Christ who strengthens you. And I believe that. Except when I don't. I'm just glad Paul's on our side now. He wasn't always on our side. I mean, he used to like really be mean to us. But now, I mean, there was the road to Damascus thing and Jesus and the scales came from his eyes. And, and I'm babbling because I get nervous. Paul would say... Introduce yourself for Pete's sake. Which is appropriate because my name's Pete. Some people call me Simon. Some people call me Cephas, which means the rock. Which sounds really cool, unless you're dumb as a rock. Most people call me Peter. The name game's confusing, I know. But my life, that's the way it's been ever since he showed up. It's been confusing. I was just a simple fisherman. That's all I ever wanted to be. I was born and raised on the Sea of Galilee, and that's the only place I wanted to be. Because let me tell you, sitting on your fishing boat on a beautiful morning like this, Watching the sun coming up over the eastern hills, lighting up the valley below. There's nowhere better on all of God's creation. In fact, that's what my brother Andrew and I were doing that morning. We were, we were getting the nets ready to go out fishing for the day. When this guy walks up, I don't know this guy from Adam. And he comes up to me and my brother and he says, come, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Craziest thing happened. We dropped our nets. We didn't think about it. We didn't process it. We just dropped our nets, walked away from the boat and have been following him since. And I think back to that day, and my brother Andrew and I talk about it a lot, we think back and we think, who does that? Who just walks up to a complete stranger and says, walk away from your life and follow me? What kind of guy would do that? We didn't have an answer then. We've been following him since. And in the things that we've seen in these years of following Jesus, you would not believe. He's turned water into wine. He's healed people by touching them. He's healed people without even being near them. He's, he's given sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf. He's allowed the mute to talk. And he's, he's touched lepers. Who touches lepers? But he not only touches them, he heals them. Who does that? Who is this guy? I asked myself that for years. Who is this guy? It took... It took, I'd say, about two years of following him, of putting these pieces together one after another, after another, after another, until I started to get some semblance of an answer. It was that night on the boat. 
It's a night a lot like last night with the storms and the wind and the rain. But before we get there, let me tell you about the day leading up to that night. The day coming up to that, that, that night on the boat. See, there's a lot that we learned about Jesus in those two years of following him. We learned he's a guy just like you and me. He eats, he sleeps, he cries, he gets tired, he gets angry, he gets happy. He's got a mom. His mom has a cousin. His cousin's mom has a kid. Jesus has a cousin. The cousin's name is John. John is what we like to say in Israel. He's a kook. It's just weird. He lives out by himself in the middle of nowhere. He dresses funny. He smells funny because he dresses funny. And he eats funny. He's a weird guy. But people from all over the countryside would go out to see John, to hear John talk about the coming Messiah, God's chosen, his anointed. No one knew, least of all John, that the coming Messiah was his cousin Jesus until he baptized Jesus. And Jesus' ministry began and flourished and John's ministry ended. He had done what he had come to do. But he never once stopped proclaiming the ways and will of God. And so, when Herodias, the wife of Philip, the brother of King Herod, moves out on Philip and moves in with Herod, John called him out on it. He said, that's not the way things are done. And she said, oh, John, you're so old-fashioned. That's just the way people do things now. They move in together. It's okay. And John said, no, it's not okay. That's not the way things are done. And Herodias got mad, and so she convinced Herod to throw him in jail. And John kept pushing, and Herodias got more mad. She had it up to here. So she took John off up from here. Convinced Herod to cut his head off. When Jesus got the news that his cousin had been murdered, been killed, his heart broke. He'd been going around for two years and healing and teaching, and wherever he went, the crowds were there. They followed him. And he says, Guys, I need to get away. So we got out on the boat and started to sail, sailing the Sea of Galilee. Let me give you a little inside Sea of Galilee information here from a life growing up on the sea. It's really a lake. It ain't that big. But it's all we got, so we call it a sea. Meaning you can see all the way around it. And so as we took off from the shore and sailed the sea, everyone could see us. And so the further we sailed, the more they walked, and they just followed along the shoreline, and they grew in numbers as they went, picking up people in every village they passed through. And when we pulled in, there was a crowd of thousands, thousands and thousands, almost as far as the eye could see, thousands of people. And even with his broken heart, even with that pain of the loss of his cousin, he had compassion on them. They were sheep without a shepherd. And so he stepped over the railing of the boat and into that crowd of people, almost drowning in them. And for hours he walked amongst them and through them and taught them and touched them. And every time he touched, he healed. And not just bumps and bruises, but, but the lame and the crippled. Bleeding issues. All that which, which the priests tell us, if you touch it, you'll be unclean. But the opposite happened. His cleanliness went on to them, and they became clean. He did this for hours. Until the other disciples came to me and said, Hey, Pete, 
tell Jesus to send them home. It's late. They need to get home and get something to eat. So I said, Jesus, send them away. Let them get some food. And, and, and Jesus, he was a kidder. He liked to joke. I love it. He looks at me straight in the eye and he says, Peter, you feed them. And I kind of laughed. <laughs> but he wasn't laughing. He wasn't laughing at all. I said, Jesus, I've been fishing this, this sea, this lake, all my life. It would take six months of fishing just to give everybody a snack. And he says, well, what do you got? I said, Jesus, we got five loaves of bread and two fish. And so he takes these five loaves of bread and two fish, and he holds them up in the air, and he, and he blesses them, and he brings them down, and he starts giving us disciples the food to pass out. And pretty soon, everybody's got food. 5,000 men, their wives, their mothers, their children, everybody's got something to eat, and they ate till they were full. And then Jesus gave each one of us 12 a basket, and he says, go pick up the leftovers. And so we go and pick up all the leftovers. We got 12 baskets full of food left over. And we step back and we look at these 12 baskets of food that came out of, came out of five loaves and two fish, really all this food that came out of nothing. And we ask that same question. Who is this guy? Well, after we had gathered those leftovers, Jesus came up to us and he says, you 12, go to the other side of the sea and I'll meet you over there. You'll meet us over there? I mean, it's a lake, but it's a big lake. You gonna walk all the way around, Jesus? He says, don't worry about it. So we go down, we start getting the boat ready to go and, and we see Jesus dismissing the crowds, sending them off. And as we push off from shore, we see Jesus walking up the hillside. And we knew what that meant because he'd done it before. He's going up to pray. And every time he prayed, he said he was going to pray to his father. And we always scratched our head at that. I mean, you're going to pray to your father. Joseph's dead. We didn't know. So we get in the boat, we push off, and it was a rough, rough night, let me tell you. Rough night. We had been awake all day long. We had gotten the news about John. We had fed the people. We had cleaned up after the people. Now, now it's dark, and we got to sail to the other side, and we're sailing against the wind and being beaten by the waves all night long. We're going nowhere fast. In fact, it takes us half the night. It's in the dead middle of the night. And we're only halfway across the lake. That's maybe three, three, maybe four miles in the middle of that lake. Been a long, long day. We were all exhausted. The wind was beating. The waves were beating. And Bartholomew calls out. He says, hey, I think there's something out in the water. Now, there's a lot of people that live on the Sea of Galilee, and so if there's another boat out in the middle of the night, especially on a night like that, it's not completely unheard of, but as it got closer, we realized it ain't a boat. I think that's a man, Bartholomew says. Here's another thing to know about all the people that live around the Sea of Galilee. John's not the only kook that lives in Israel. There was a guy once, lived on the Sea of Galilee, ran around a, a graveyard naked, breaking chains. Weird people live around there, so if you think a guy swimming in the middle of the night through a storm, through the Sea of Galilee is weird, well, at least we could process that. But he wasn't swimming. He was walking on the water. Like you and I walk on solid ground, he's walking on the water. Well, the only thing that we can come to the conclusion of, the only way we can make this make sense is it's obviously a ghost, and so that's what we scream out. Now, as the leader of the disciples, I have to tell you, the other 11 were a little scared at this point. I myself was terrified. I didn't know what to think. 
And as we're yelling and screaming, we hear a voice break through, Fear not, for it is I. And I look at the other disciples and say, Hey, that ghost sounds a lot like Jesus. And Andrew, not for the first time, smacks me upside the back of the head and says, You twit, that is Jesus. I said, Jesus, if that's you, if that's really you, tell me to come out to the water on you, with you. Really secretly hoping it wasn't Jesus. But it was. And Jesus said, come. Here's the thing, when Jesus says, come, you come. Just like that morning on the Sea of Galilee when we were getting the boat ready to go and Jesus came up to us and said, come, follow me. When Jesus says, come, you come. I didn't think, I didn't process, I came. When I'm on the boat in the middle of the night with the wind and the waves and Jesus says, come, come out to me on the water, I didn't think, I didn't process, I went. Next thing I know, I'm over the railing of the boat my feet are on the water and I am staring Jesus directly in the eye because he's close enough now. I can see the whites of his eyes and I'm walking towards him. And everything's great until the wind broke near my knees and splashed me in the face with the wind. And I looked down and I saw all the white caps and all the waves. And I looked up and I saw the thick, dark clouds filled with water being blown through the sky. And my eyes were off of Jesus, and I sank like the rock that I am. And as I sank, I cried out, Lord, save me. Like I said, I'm not educated like Paul. But I grew up, I went to synagogue, I learned from the priests and the scribes. I learned scripture, and as I sank that night in that deep lake, that deep, dark sea of Galilee, I thought back to some of those lessons. I thought back to the 18th Psalm. If you got a copy of your scriptures with you, open up to the 18th Psalm. The 18th Psalm. I don't know why I was thinking about it that night. I don't know why it flashed through my head in that instant that I sank into the water. But it was there. It was there. I've since put pieces together, but at the time, through my head, I was thinking, I love you. O oh Lord, my strength, my God, my rock, my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompass me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. And in my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils, a devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, thick clouds, dark with water. 
Out of the brightness before him, hailstones and coals of fire broke through the clouds. The Lord also thundered in the heavens. The Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed forth lightnings and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen. The foundations of the earth were laid bare. At his rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils, he sent from on high, and he took me, and he drew me out of many waters. Like I said, I don't know why at that very moment Psalm 18 was going through my head. I'm not even sure if I got it all right going through my head. But I got the point. That's who God is. That's how Job describes the creator God who set the foundations of the world in place, who, who put the sea in its channels and said, here you shall go and no further. The one who created it all, the one who created it out of nothing, and if God could create it, he can control it. And so if he can create an entire world, an entire universe out of nothing, he can make some bread and fish out of nothing. If he can make the earth solid and the water wet and liquidy, he can make the water solid if he wants to. That's who God is. Next thing I know, I was completely submerged and a hand plunged in after me, pulled me, drew me out of the water. And like a child, he carried me back to the boat and he laid me down, dripping, soaking wet. And the 11 disciples were behind me and we all stared at Jesus as he walked into the boat and we thought, who is this guy? Who is this guy that at the moment he steps in the boat, everything stopped? The wind stopped, the waves stopped, the thick, dark clouds filled with water, gone. Who does that? But the first time in my time with Jesus, for the first time that I can remember, those pieces came together and I had an answer. Now, I, again, I've been babbling. For those of you that are still awake, you might be wondering, what's Peter going on about? Get to the point, Pete! Point is this. If he hasn't already, at some point, Jesus will come to you where you are in your life and say, come, follow me. When Jesus says, come, you come. And you're going to see things in that life with Jesus that you can't explain, you can't understand without the power of the Holy Spirit. And at some point, Jesus is going to call you out of that comfortable boat and out into that messy, choppy world, and he will say, come. And when Jesus says, come, you come. And you'll take one or two steps, one or two very unsure steps out in that mess of a world with its wind and its waves. And you're going to get distracted and you're going to take your eyes off of Jesus and you're going to sink like the rock that you are. And you're going to say, Lord, save me. He's going to plunge his hand into that water, into that mess of a world in which you are drowning, and he's going to draw you out. He's going to carry you like a child, and you're going to look into his face, and you're going to say, who is this guy? I pray that you come to the exact same answer the disciples and I came to, that all those who have been before you in his church have come to. Truly, he is 
the Son of God, God himself, and made this peace in the knowledge of God made man. Peace which passes all understanding, may it be with you now and forever. Again, I say shalom and amen. This is a point in the service where we would do offering, but we're not. We all know the drill. Offering plates are in the back. Or give to your heart's content online at zionrc.org. Continue with the prayers of the church. This week, we remember Audrey Sales, who was in and out of the hospital. Caden, who is the great nephew of Roger Grushaw who was in the hospital, had a scary bout and has been released and is doing much better. And Mike, remind me of your sister-in-law's name? Jenny. Jenny, Jenny Bierenbaum, who will be undergoing cancer treatment. We also pray for a very, very sad and tragic situation. Another, another life lost to cancer, only this time a teenager, a teenage girl, Jenna Ham, who is a friend of the Miller family. We pray for the Millers and all the family and friends of Jenny as they mourn her loss. Are there any other prayers we'd like to bring before the congregation? Seeing none, please rise for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, beseeching him for the gift of peace. Grant peace, we pray, in mercy, Lord. Peace in our time, O send us, for there is none on earth but you, none other to defend us. You only, Lord, can fight for us. Amen. For the church and all who are called to lives of service to God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Grant then, O oh God, your will be done, that when the church bells are ringing, many in saving faith may come, where Christ his message is bringing. I know my own, my own know me. You, not the world, my faith shall see. My peace I leave with you. Amen. For the blessing of God upon our nation and its leaders, that we lead peaceful lives, let us pray to the Lord. God bless our native land. Firm may she ever stand through storm and night when the wild tempests rave. Ruler of wind and wave, do thou our country save by thy great might. For the needs of ourselves and others, for healing and restoration, for solace and comfort. Lord, this day we especially pray for Jenny and Audrey and Caden and for all those who need your, your healing touch, all those that we name in the stillness of our own hearts. Let us pray to the Lord to be our great deliverer still, the Lord of life and death. Restore and quicken, soothe and bless with your life-giving breath. To hands that work and eyes that see, give wisdom's healing power that whole and sick and weak and strong may praise you evermore. With thanks for the faithful examples set by those whose earthly journeys are complete and those Witnesses to Christ yet inspire us. Lord, this week we especially pray for the family and friends of Jenny, Jenna, as they mourn her loss. Give them the peace and comfort that can only come from the knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ, and the sure and certain hope in the resurrection that is theirs through his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. We now remember as we pray our dear ones in your caring 
who brightly shine in endless day, past death and all despairing. At our life's end, Lord, as your own, bring us with them around your throne, the joys of heaven sharing. These things and all else that we should have asked, grant us according to your gracious will, O Lord, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And Jesus Christ, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing and benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We remain standing for our closing hymn. Be seated. Thank you again for joining us here at Zion Lutheran Church School and Preschool for receiving the good and gracious gifts of God and thanking and praising Him for those gifts. Speaking of gifts, brings us to birthdays. Any birthdays this week? John. John's birthday is today. Is it? When is it? Today. It is today. Anybody joining John? Anniversaries. Baptismal birthdays. Get to know your baptismal birthday. Everybody know their baptismal birthday? Got a few. Cody knows it. Lori knows it. Great. All right. Well, God's blessings on your week. We sing happy birthday, dear John. Be to you.